Blaze Media Editor at Large and the Blaze TV host of Zero Hour. He is also the founder and editor uh, or editorial director of Return, which is a new uh, vertical on uh, theblaze.com. We have several different things that we're working on, and one of them is Return, just like on your keyboard when you hit Return. It's all about tech. Um, he wrote a story that is one of the more disturbing dystopian stories, and we've done our homework on this to some degree enough to go, oh, no, this is actually in practice and being used by the University of Michigan right now. This is not some, you know, someday. And it's a little bit like the Matrix. Environmentalists are worried about how do we make enough power to be able to power AI. Well, they have found a way called organoids. Wait until you hear this. James is uh, with us now. Hello, James. Hey, Glenn, how are you? <laughs> well, that's better before I read your story uh, on Sorry organoids. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, this is bizarre and terrifying. Yeah, it's really disturbing. Uh, and it's been around for a little while, but it's really starting to kick into gear. Uh, as you said, you know, AI consumes a ton of electricity, a lot of energy. Uh, you know, environmentalists have always hated nuclear power uh, for, for pretty perverse reasons, I think. And uh, so they're so afraid of using nuclear power that, uh, that what's in vogue now is turning to us to be the batteries. Uh, just take those stem cells out of uh, embryos or uh, out of the lab, sometimes even out of tumors, uh, turn them into... Um, uh, brain cells, basically, and use those as batteries to power uh, uh, what they're calling bioprocessors. Uh, they say it'll use about a million times less power than a typical digital processor, uh, and that's a good thing, they say. Uh, you can access them remotely. Um, and this is the new hype. You know, it's uh, from the same folks who brought you the idea of uh, going to carbon zero, net zero carbon use. Uh, they look at human beings as a waste of space, a waste of energy, and they want to harness that to, uh, to run AI that's uh, supposed to be smarter than anyone can understand. So on Final Spark's website, this is the company that's doing this, they link to a Daily Mail article that says organoids are tiny, self-organized, three-dimensional tissue cultures made from stem cells. Stanford's website says stem cells come from two sources, embryonic stem cells, um, and then... Um, uh, the, you know, the, that's unused embryos and the, they are then donated to science or adult stem, stem cells. But those are really limited and can only generate certain types of cells. So they also say Final Sparks website says these organiz, uh, these organoids live for about 100 days. So are we harvesting embryos, using them to power a supercomputer for 100 days and then killing them and looking for more embryo stem cells? Well, right. So, you know, if you're, if you're uncomfortable with IFV, this stuff is going to drive you nuts. There's, there's an extra category of stem cells that they've created called induced pluripotent cells. And basically what you do is you start the embryonic process, uh, but you arrest it before it gets too far, and then you harvest the stem cells out of this artificially induced embryonic organism, right, human organism, uh, and then you create a fork and you just grow those cells, uh, you know, sort of in the way that they grow uh, fake meat cells. You know, it's it's really akin to, to cancerous cells in the way that they grow. Um, and uh, right. So this is something that, you know, it's not one and done. It's not like, well, maybe once upon a time there was an embryo who had to die for the greater good. No, this is like a perpetual motion machine. You, you got to keep harvesting. Yeah. Every hundred days. Um, right. This is not a hypothetical, by the way. Uh, Final Spark says the University of Michigan already using this neuro platform. And this is, this is because there's not enough energy and these, these organoids um, use so much less energy that if we just harvest these embryos, um, we can then... Um, AI can go on and live forever and we don't have energy problems. Good Lord, that's terrifying. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, you got to ask, you know, if we were created in the image of God, how far can you stray from that? 
before uh, before something really horrible happens. It's none of this is a surprise. I mean, Nikola Tesla back when he was alive said uh, infamously said, "You will live to see man-made horrors beyond your comprehension," and uh, we're getting pretty close. Yeah, you have um, you now have scientists who don't don't necessarily believe in God, think that they are creating a God in AI, now harvesting God's creation to power their new God. Good Lord, help us. Yeah, and if you cross that Rubicon where you say, okay, we're going to turn these, uh, these, these brain cells into cyborgs, into Frankenstein cells, uh, then it's not very long before you say, like, well, gosh, why don't we just turn the whole human race into this kind of cyborg? entity you know uh the terminator at least the machines are stomping around looking to wipe us out uh these machines this are is going to look at us more as the solution than the problem because they just suck all their energy out of us you know i was reading a um a reading a book a, about energy and how all this is is going and um it will i mean if it's an entity that needs food needs energy to live just like us you're trapped in the mountains, uh, you know, in a snowstorm, and there's 20 of you, and you start dying, you're going to start eating each other. It's just, you have to survive, and that is what happens. The same thing. It will eat whatever will give it the energy. Uh, I'd rather not train it to eat people or anything with, to do with people. Well, especially when you got nuclear power there. And, you know, to their credit, there are some tech guys out there who are working on uh, ad advanced forms of nuclear power, clean energy coming out of uh, things that you can do, splitting up uh, atoms and the like. Uh, yeah, there are risks there. But, gosh, I mean, if we're going to go down this road it, to any degree where we're going to need significantly more energy uh, in order to, uh, you know, whether it's stay ahead of China or whatever excuse you want to come up with, uh, or just, you know, for, for, the, for the sake of, uh, of, of more human flourishing, uh, imagine that. Uh, gosh, you gotta you gotta take a, a look at nuclear before you start <laughs> looking at the guy sitting next to you as your source of energy. I saw a, a story yesterday about um, here in Idaho that they're shutting down the water on because of environmental reasons. They're shutting down the water for I don't even remember uh, half a million acres or or more of farmland here. They're just going to shut the water off, so all these farmers are going to lose their farmland. Coincidentally, what is also happening at exactly the same time is they are opening up cobalt mines in Idaho. And these cobalt mines need tons of water to keep the drills cool and everything else. And those are for batteries. So it appears uh, as if the state of Idaho shafted the farmers and said, forget about the food, transfer the water to the cobalt mines so we can have batteries. That's more important. And nobody's tied these two together yet. It, it, we're in trouble. We've misplaced our values. It's a big problem. And you know what else is crazy about Idaho, Glenn, is right now there's some Bitcoin mining going on in Idaho. Now, you know, a lot of people sort of don't understand how Bitcoin works. They're skeptical. But this is something that is still a first-rate technology that ordinary Americans can use starting right now. Uh, it takes, a, you know, maybe a minute or two to learn how to do it, but you can do it. When the Bitcoin miners take the energy that they need in order to do what they do, uh, legislators get upset. Oh, I don't know. This is using a lot of energy. So they're looking at uh, curbing the ability of the miners to use electricity or even charging them more for their electrical use. Meanwhile, when Facebook comes to town in Idaho and they say, hey, we're building a gigantic data center, it's going to consume tons and tons of energy. The legislators say, well, if you're creating jobs, we'll actually give you a tax cut. This is how messed up our priorities are right now. Wow. I don't know if you saw um, the godfather of AI, but uh, Jeffrey Hinton, he's the guy who left Google, uh, if I remember right. And he left, he left Google because he said they were going into some unethical things and it was becoming a real danger. Do you remember this story? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and he said uh, he had real fear at Google that the that AI would fall into the hands of bad actors. Um, he just did an interview um, where uh, he, he said that um, 
uh, he was asked the question here if he was in favor of a super intelligent AI destroying humanity and replacing it with something objectively better in terms of consciousness. He said, I'm actually for it, but I think it'd be wiser for me to say that I'm against it. He was then pressed on and asked, can you elaborate? He said, well, people don't like being replaced. Well, yeah, no, I, I'm good. He said, it's not, it's, it's, we, it's not clear that we're the best form of intelligence that there is. Obviously, from a person's perspective, everything relates to people. But it may be that there comes a point when we see things like humanist as a racist term. We're dealing with people who are very, very smart and very, very clever. But many of these people are anti-human and they hide behind the environmentalist thing um, to, uh, to get away with it. It's really diabolical. I mean, you, you, if, if you're looking for a, an intelligence that's higher than human intelligence that actually doesn't want to kill us, but in fact loves us with a love beyond human comprehension, it's right there in the form of God the Creator. Um, and if you reject the existence of God, then it's just really looking like these days only a matter of time before you reject the existence of human beings, too. I know it's not Maybe. everyone. I know there's some, some atheists out there who think that human beings are still good, but it's looking like they're outnumbered and, and they're losing the, the battle for the, the soul of the atheists, if you will. I mean, these tech yeah. guys, some of them, they have really just, they, they do hate humanity and they think that intelligence is, is more important than, than love. They think the, the brain is more important than the heart. And, uh, you know, it all sounds interesting when it's at the level of theory, but when you ask them to develop it out into practice, it doesn't mean replacing humans. It means wiping them out. So which, which movie do you think is more likely? I mean, I never thought The Matrix, but The Matrix, you know, batteries, human batteries, and it creating a utopia uh, in people's minds. Or do you see us, I mean, remember the, the beginning of uh, Skynet and the Terminator, the first line, I think, in that movie is, the machines rose from the ashes in the nuclear fire. Um, and it was AI that had been used by the Pentagon and the world's war machines. Um, and then we blew, blew ourselves up and AI decided we were the problem and started to wipe us out. Here we are talking about the absolute unthinkable World War III, which would end in nuclear war and wipe almost all life off the planet. And we are giving the keys to much of our uh, work. We just had uh, Jack Carr on yesterday where he was talking about, you know, he said, I, nobody would tell me exactly, but if I talk to enough people, they're putting it all together and you can look at it and go, oh, we're turning the keys over uh, to our, uh, of our killing uh, machines over to AI soon. That, that's not, <laughs> that can't be a good thing. Which, which movie are we are we going towards it's kind of like you know are we brave new world or 1984 i think we're 1984 are we headed more towards uh uh the terminator or the matrix well you know we got lots of sci-fi movies to choose from uh i would i would point toward uh you know we've got sci-fi horror films that we can look at too uh, we got movies like Event Horizon. We got uh, series like uh, like Hellraiser, where the bad guys are interdimensional demons who uh, get summoned by human beings and and uh, lead them into hell. Uh, we've got you know David Cronenberg, uh, Videodrome. He's got other films you know that really show you that yeah, there is that side of technology that makes you that sort of fills you with childlike wonder and and all these promises of a flourishing beyond imagination. Well, there's a dark side too. And if we pretend the dark side isn't there, that's usually the, the way that uh, we get led astray in the worst possible way. So is there anything that can be done uh, going back to the first topic of using stem cells from embryos for human brains uh, into these organoids? Is there, is there anything that we should be looking towards or pushing for or, or what? Well, you know, I mean, I think, n number one, we got to ask ourselves some serious questions about uh, 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 how enslaved we're going to be if we are always looking to China. 
if we look at China and say, oh, this, they're, they're taking over, you know, we can't beat them unless we join them or we have to fight fire with fire. If we are constantly comparing ourselves to what the Chinese are doing, we're going to lose touch with who we really are as Americans and depending on how things shake out as human beings. That's point one. I think point two is, yeah, OK, you want you want to, to, to innovate on energy? Look to nuclear. Um, this is this is not some some bizarre new technology. It's been around for a long time. Uh, some countries that, you know, the French, the Japanese, yeah, they had Fukushima, but they have tsunamis all the time. Not a problem in, in most of the United States. Uh, right. There are ways of doing plentiful energy that don't involve turning human beings into these sort of right. Frankenstein cyborgs and using them for energy. James, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You can read this article on return at uh, theblaze.com. 